Welcome to this latest edition in our Critical Economics series with Dr. Heiner Flasbeck. Now, those of you who have been watching and following USI will remember we interviewed Herr Flasbeck the best part of a year and a half ago when he was still the director of the UN's Globalization and Economics Department. Nowadays, he is retired and working on a, a number of projects and as he will tell you is probably just as busy today in retirement as he was when we last spoke to him. Herr Flasbeck, it's a delight to speak to you once again my friend. Hi, welcome. Good to hear from you. Herr Flasbeck, a year and a half ago when we last spoke, you will recall that Europe at that point, in particular the Eurozone, was by all intensive purposes on the brink of contagion in many respects and implosion. Now, the narrative that we hear today from the powers that be, the IMF and governments in Europe, tell us that austerity has worked. And now that we are on the path to reducing unemployment and economic growth, the green shoots are there. Is this a, an analysis that you share, Herr Flasbeck? And if not, why? No, I don't share it at all. Uh, you see what we have right now, just today we got the latest figure of industrial production in the Eurozone and it's a plain disaster because that very little upward trend that we had in the past uh, six months or so is now broken. Uh, we're going back down and uh, so there is no recovery at all in, in the Eurozone. Even Germany is uh, on the brink of recession and, uh, and so far uh, the austerity policy clearly has failed. It has not succeeded, but it has failed. Uh, the debt ratios of uh, the critical uh, government are rising again. And uh, what we see is we're entering a phase of deflation. That is clearly what I forecast uh, one and a half years ago, that the whole policy of wage cutting in the Eurozone will lead to deflation. And that is where we are. We are in deflation and we're coming close to a, a, a full-fledged recession. Thanks for those introductory comments, Herr Flasbeck. I'm particularly interested in the room for manoeuvre, the policy option choices is, I think, a better way of phrasing it. Now, we see in the Eurozone that interest rates are at 0.15%, so there is nowhere to go there. And, of course, inflation is at 0.5%. So what you're describing, that deflationary context in the Eurozone in particular, is a very real and live threat. What are the array of policy choices in light of there being very little room on the monetary front? Well, on the monetary front, there's not much to do anymore because uh, the central bank, as you said, has come down with the interest rate close to zero. Uh, what we have, on the other hand, is uh, we started a wage cutting process all over of the eurozone. Uh, it uh, began in southern Europe uh, with a very high unemployment rate, and it produced high unemployment rates. That's what, I, what we talked about one and a half years ago also, and I was absolutely right in saying if you cut wages, you produce unemployment. It's not bringing down unemployment, but you produce unemployment and deflation. And that is uh, exactly what happened. So uh, on the policy front, uh, there is uh, there not many instruments left. Monetary policy is fully out of the picture, in my view. Uh, the only thing that we are discussing now, uh, in Germany even, believe me, even in Germany, there is a discussion now about wages, about wage policy and the change in the income policy in, in Germany. Uh, the, the, uh, even the uh, Bundesbank, Deutsche Bundesbank has admitted that there is a major problem with German wages and uh, this is uh, now uh, uh, coming uh, into, into the public discussion. Even the president of the Bundesbank has said the German wages have to rise more and, and so far uh, there is a dramatic change in, in the whole understanding of the situation. The next question would be, when will fiscal policy come in? That is where the Italians are pushing for that, the French are pushing for that, 
the germs are still flocking it. But this would be the next question as soon as we everybody has to has to admit that we have uh, now a recessionary phase, enter the recessionary phase right now. Thanks for those comments, Herr Flasbeck. I'm particularly interested on the the German Bundesbank and political powers now discussing that there has to be a reflation of the economy and one of the mechanisms to do that of course is wage rises but how is that compatible with the austerity measures that are being enacted and indeed accelerated as we have seen recently in France i.e. when one positive thing happens it is counteracted by these further cuts and constraints in the economy so it doesn't look if those policies persist that even wage rises will be necessary to help spur the economy is that an analysis that you share is wage rises the silver bullet or do they need to happen in conjunction with austerity measures being halted and indeed investment happening well, you, you definitely need both. You need, uh, on the one hand, you need uh, uh, to stop the austerity policy. There can be no doubt about that. Uh, but in addition, uh, a, a change, a fundamental change in wages is absolutely uh, crucial because the uh, level of competitiveness has to uh, be uh, redirected. So Germany has to give up competitiveness and the other countries, including Italy and France, uh, have to gain competitiveness. There can be no doubt about that for the long-term future. Uh, and uh, in the short term, this will also be a stimulus. When in Germany, wages would be rising by, say, 5-6% uh, in nominal terms, that would be clearly a stimulus for the German economy. We have just uh, calculated on my on my uh, blog, uh, Plastic Economics, we have calculated uh, the situation, the, the, the development of the German economy, and you clearly see if you look uh, into detail of what happens, uh, uh, an increase in wages would have clearly negative consequences on the export side, but that is exactly what is wished, uh, given the German surpluses in the current account and the trade account, uh, and, uh, but it would have very positive effects on the consumption side, and that is necessary to reduce the current account because that stimulates imports. So uh, the, the wage, the change in wages uh, in uh, in, in Germany is absolutely crucial, it's absolutely necessary for uh, 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 a solution, to find a solution, a long-term solution for the Eurozone, but you're right, in the short term, uh, fiscal austerity has to be given up, it has to be uh, stopped right now, and uh, I'm sure that there will be, in, in the next weeks and months, we will see uh, an enormous pressure from the southern countries, uh, mainly Italy and, and France, on Germany, to, to agree to, uh, to such a change. And Germany cannot, cannot uh, 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 reject it because uh, given its own uh, very fragile economic situation and the danger of Germany going into recession, uh, it, is, it is ridiculous to, to fight against uh, uh, further uh, an end of austerity. And you see today even we have the lowest, the lowest long-term interest rate on 10-year bonds uh, on 10 year uh, government uh, debt in Germany that we ever had, I think it's very close to 1%, 1.03 or so. Uh, and this is a clear indication that there are recessionary forces on the way, and uh, it will be politically very difficult for the German government now to resist uh, to change course. That's absolutely fascinating, and from a UK and Irish perspective, that is absolutely music to our ears, as we would say, that there is a change or the beginning of a change in the mindset towards wage rises in Germany, because as we know, without Germany leading on this, then it will be impossible for the rest of Europe to follow. I would just like to ask one or two last questions, Herr Flasbeck, and it's about, in particular, the mirage of economic growth, and we are seeing this in the UK in particular, where economic growth is forecast to be around 3.1% for the year. Indeed, the IMF is holding up the UK as one of the, the best examples, 
and how austerity actually works. But behind that, Herr Flasbeck, we are seeing that while unemployment is reducing, it is actually a mirage because of the type of employment that people are actually being taken on, such as zero hours contracts, precarious forms of work. Is this something that is happening in Europe as well, whereby countries are saying that the economies are on demand, but what is actually happening is greater forms of insecurity within the, the labour market, and indeed that is having a deflationary impact as well? Well, sure, uh, there can be no doubt about it. Uh, we have uh, this experience in, in Germany all over the place. We had precarious, uh, uh, we have dramatically increased our precarious work. Uh, we have dramatically uh, increased all the uh, low wage jobs, the zero wage, zero, zero euro jobs, even the one euro jobs. And uh, so this is, uh, this is a tendency all over the place because it's clear uh, with the new increase of unemployment all over the world in the last uh, five years after the financial crisis, and it was clearly due to the financial crisis, uh, it, is, it is unavoidable that the power of uh, employers and employer association has dramatically increased. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the political competence to understand the situation and to correct it. But, uh, as I said, the, the, factual, the factual development will, will force a change. Uh, I see in, in Great Britain things that people say austerity has uh, been successful. No, it has not been successful. Great Britain, United Kingdom, had uh, some uh, favorite effects. They had a devaluation of the, of the pound uh, in the first round. Then they have a new reduction of the saving rate of private households and so on. So there are a number of special effects. And under these circumstances, by chance, uh, the austerity measures cannot uh, produce as much harm as they would otherwise. But the whole of Europe has seen now that they produce enormous, uh, an enormous amount of harm. And uh, in an on, and they, they are really a failure. The austerity is a failure, and um, and so far it's ridiculous now to say from uh, the Conservative government in, in, in the UK uh, to say go on with uh, uh, austerity. You see, our example will show you that it can work. You no, know, it cannot work. Uh, it will definitely fail, and uh, this is where we are. Uh, thank you for those comments, and indeed today. The Office of National Statistics within the UK has actually shown how for the first time since 2009, while we're supposed to be having this economic growth, wages are now falling again. So that directly links into the points that you're making, Herr Flasbeck. The last question I would like to put to you is that while an uh, increase in minimum wages and what in the UK we are defining as a living wage. There is no doubt that the greatest scourge in Europe at the moment is unemployment, and in particular, youth unemployment, whereby around a quarter of all young people do not have any form of employment. And even those who are in employment, and it is often the precarious forms of work that we have spoken about. What couple of policy measures, Herr Flasbeck, in addition to uh, a rise in wage levels, would you say has to be put on the agenda today in order to address the greatest crisis in Europe, which is youth unemployment? Well, I, I think uh, what we need, we need uh, uh, an approach on, on two legs, so to say. Uh, the first leg is, we, we agree on that, is wage, wages, income policy, they have, we need a dramatic change. That includes, for me, a minimum wage increases or the introduction of minimum wage in Germany, which is now on the way, but the minimum wage is much too low. So we need uh, a permanent adjustment of all nominal wages to inflation plus uh, productivity increases. This has to be an agreement. If this doesn't work, uh, all the rest cannot, uh, cannot uh, function. Uh, plus, but what we need in addition is clearly a new policy of government in terms of uh, redistribution. Uh, all the tax cuts that we have seen for enterprises, for rich people in the past, in the last uh, 
10 to 20 years have not worked at all. And uh, we have to acknowledge that. In Germany, we had a dramatic tax cut for, for companies in the beginning of the, of the century. And the result was on investment, nothing. No change in investment, the, even the investment ratio uh, compared to the GDP is falling. Uh, so that there was no effect. And if such a policy of uh, dramatic redistribution in favor of capital has no result, well, then we can turn it around. We have to turn it around because we have to benefit the, to favor the masses and, and their income so that we get uh, from that side uh, a stimulus for the economy. Herr Flasbeck, that only leaves me to thank you once again for contributing to USI's Critical Economic Series. It's always lovely to have a conversation with you, particularly from a, a German perspective, arguing for a rise in wage levels and fighting against austerity. It only leaves me to thank you and we really look forward to hearing from you in the future and gaining the benefit of your wisdom. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye, Andrew.